What's going on, everybody? So my name is Weston, and I finished going live in the group chat. Um, I've got a question about how you can trade um, and successfully, you know, and strategically make money off your trading um, with a vehicle, with a dirt bike, or whatever it is. And I was like, why, why have I not made a video on this? I did this when I was 15, 16, 17 uh, years old. So, so, so much based off seasons, what people wanted. And I might as well make the video now. Uh, I'm actually super excited to talk about this. Uh, so I, let's just jump right into it. And I'm going to talk about, you know, what I was able to trade when I was 15 and 16. Why I was able to, you know, trade up in a sense. And, uh, you know, trade up to something with more value. Uh, so basically the first thing that I was able to trade was when I was about 16 years old, I purchased a, I'm going to share with you, a, it was a, actually a Game and Fish truck, a 1999 uh, Chevrolet Silverado, had the 4.8 liter in it, and, uh, you know, here's a picture of basically what it looked like. So here, here you can see it right there. Um, basically, it was a 1999 G, or Chevrolet Silverado, had the 4.8 in it, four-wheel drive, but other than that, completely base, crank up windows. Um, Rubber floor mats, nothing special. I mean, base as can be. It was the extended cab. Um, it wasn't Z71. It was just 4x4 on the side. Worth about $3,500 at the time uh, just because it was so plain Jane. Didn't have the 5.3. Uh, you know, basic, basic, basic. But I always wanted a Z28 Camaro, okay? So knowing that, you know, if someone has a Camaro, a compact car that's not very drivable, uh, I'm talking 1998 to 2002 Camaro has the LS1 in it. Um, you know, very uh, well. Let's say like quick at for the time. Um, they're not necessarily that appealing, uh, but I wanted one for the engine, for you know the six-speed transmission, the T56 in it, and I knew the value was there. They were still worth about six to seven thousand dollars at the time. Um, again, I had three thousand dollars in this truck. It was worth about thirty-five hundred bucks. I knew that if I was strategic enough, I could get someone with, you know, an LS1 Camaro that maybe started a family or it's becoming wintertime. They need that four wheel drive. I was in Arkansas currently at the time. And so what I did was I just went on a search for the next week. I just every Z28 or every SS Camaro, they're both LS1s. I would message and be like, hey, you know, are you interested in trades? A lot of times when people have cars, they're willing to trade up. Or, you know, trade for a truck because there's extra room. Maybe they have a family. Uh, maybe, you know, something happened in their lives. Maybe they just have a job that they need to have a truck that they can haul or use as a utility tool. Um, it's, there's way more pros uh, with or a truck, logically, than with a car or a sports car that's only two doors. There's no room in it. Um, really, the only thing you can do is either go fast or, you know, put it in sixth gear and save gas. So, knowing this, I just went on that hunt and, uh, you know, for a week. I just contacted people, and finally I came across a 2000 Z28 Camaro. It was pewter, which is what the, the color's called on this. Let me show you what it looked like. It was a pewter silver. Uh, not quite this appealing. Had a little more base model wheels, um, but it was very, very close to this. Had the black top as well, T-tops. Um, but what I was like, what I saw after was the six-speed transmission, which is just alone is worth about 2,500 bucks. So I did my research on that. Um, I knew that the LS1 engine in it was worth another at least $2,500 to $3,000 uh, to the right buyer. Um, so I waited, you know, for the right time. It was actually in the winter time, which was a big pro uh, to have a truck over a car. I wanted to keep it. So I knew that this car was now devalued since it's the winter time. But to me, it was going to be worth it because I was going to enjoy it and then hold it, wait till summertime when it's worth even more and then sell it for a profit. On top of that, I knew that the truck was worth, you know, more right now. So I had to get rid of it while it was cold. Uh, and I knew, you know, just like I talked about earlier, there wasn't, you know, room for it. There's not, you know, much practical. Pract it's not that practical um, to have that car as it is to have that truck, especially in Arkansas. In the, you know, I actually bought it in Tennessee. So, you know, Mississippi, Tennessee area. It was, just wasn't as practical. And this guy actually, like I was planning, um, had a family. He was like, I don't have enough room. It's my personal car. I love it. Uh, it's got the six speed in it. So he, he actually knew it was more valuable, but he's like, I have to have a truck now. You know, it, it snowed. Uh, I think it iced over uh, a week before that. And he was like, I couldn't drive anywhere. Um, so I had something that he wanted. Um, 
basically not not even that he wanted it was a need and i traded a need for something that i wanted that i was willing to hold on to wait for that you know warmer temperature you know becoming summertime where then the z28 uh, the camaro would go up in price and i could sell it then and enjoy it you know during the winter clearly when it's not snowing because it wouldn't go anywhere or i'd wreck it um so i just whenever it was a decent day you know 40 plus sunny i drive it enjoy the crap out of it and then i sold it for a profit i think i sold it for like sixty five hundred dollars so i had three in the truck traded up uh, be based off those you know general rule of thumb or that that knowledge or that understanding of what how i knew i was going to enter and exit and i made like 3500 bucks just because i was strategic yeah it took you know two to three months but i enjoyed the like it was a six speed i, I enjoyed the crap out of it and uh that's just one really cool tip that you can learn from is, you know, how to trade up, but be very strategic. I've also done this with a four wheeler and a geo tracker. I traded a racing four wheeler in the winter time for a geo tracker four wheel drive. The racing four wheelers, you know, going to have no needs. Um, maybe, maybe a four wheel drive mudding four wheeler will help in the winter time because duck season, deer season, but a two wheel drive, uh, it was a, uh, TRX 450. Um, just there's no desire. There was no demand. So I knew that if I got that geo tracker, this is another example, um, that I knew it'd probably be a kid because it was on 33 inch super swampers with a six inch lift. And it was. And I knew that they would really want that impulse. Um, they would have the impulse decision like, oh, I want that 450, that racing four wheeler. And I was able to ca capitalize on that, waited till duck season and sold it for twenty nine hundred. I think I made another um, thousand dollars profit just you know, basing it off seasons, what time of year it was, and understanding what the seller or the person that I, you know, wanted their vehicle, what they wanted in return or what they may, maybe just needed and didn't even want. Just like the guy that had started the family. It just wasn't logical for him to have that LS1 Camaro um, whenever he, you know, could have a truck with more space. You know, it was winter time. He needed four-wheel drive, needed to be safe on the roads for his children and family. Um, so it was a win-win for both of us, but I played it, you know, in my my favor so it was right for me i was willing to hold it and then you know capitalize on it and make you know thousands of dollars doing this little strategy uh, i just wanted to share that with you guys really cool i don't even think i've shared that on my channel uh, but that's really something that i do a lot is trade up rather than just sell something for a profit you can really do that if you're really smart and um, careful so hope you guys enjoyed that little story um, and the examples of how i was able to do that when i was 16. If you guys want to learn more about what we do or ask me any questions, you can hit that first link um, and that'll be the Flipping Wheels landing page where we go live every day in a private group chat. Um, or you can you know, hit the second link or the third link, which is mine or Caleb's Instagram and direct message me and ask me any questions that you have uh, about cars, whatever it may be. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Thank you.